Before the throne of God above, I have a strong and perfect plea, a great high priest whose name is love, whoever lives and pleads for me. Satan tempts me to despair and tells me of the guilt within. Upward I look and see him there who made an end to all my sin. Because the sinless Savior died, my sinful soul is counted free for God the just is satisfied to look on him and pardon me behold him there the risen lamb my perfect spotless righteousness the i
Amen, amen. Thank you, Brother BC. And praise the Lord sa um, uh, goodness ng Panginoon sa umagang ito. Salamat po sa pagkakataon muli na mag resume ang ating ang ating ano po mga kapatid ang ating uh, Workman's Treasure Study Series. Medyo it's been a while po mga kapatid na nagbakasyon po tayo na uh, hindi tayo nakapagpakinig ng ng mga lessons dito sa Workman's Treasure pero salamat sa pagkakataon muli na meron tayong pagkakataon ngayon. And we praise God that we're so exciting po mga kapatid every Tuesdays dito sa Workman's Treasure Study Series we are talking about we are studying dito po sa Rightly Dividing 101 and um, so exciting kasi dito na tayo sa teachings of Christ concerning the tribulation at hindi pa rin tayo tapos doon sa lesson na yun. and but uh, ating pagpapatuloy po mga kapatid ngayon lalong lalo na we'll be talking about some of the signs of the second coming po mga kapatid and uh, ngayon ay let's uh, let's uh, welcome let's greet po ang bawat isa na kasama natin dito nahi natin dito sa Zoom uh, mga kapatid of course kasama natin dito sila Mother Mary hello Mother Mary and good morning alam ko parang may guest ata sila good morning din din sa kanilang guest And even uh, kasama din natin si Sister Mercy Mekos watching also from Baguio City. Ngayong umaga, good morning din kay Sister Mercy and kay Sister Rose Cantal. Kasama din natin this morning din dito sa Zoom. At ganun din ang Fabregas couple, si Brother Edmond, Sister Mila. Kasama din natin ngayon. And good morning din kay Sister Ophelia also watching jan sa Baguio or jan sa Buntok. And kasama din natin ang ang Sevilla family, Brother Peter. Kasama din natin sila this morning. And of course, ang Fernandez family, si Brother Jofi kasama din natin uh, ngayong umaga. So, good morning po sa ating lahat. At dito sa ating uh, Facebook Live, meron na tayong uh, 11 na viewers sa ngayon, ng mga kapatiran na nandito natin. Hindi ko alam kung alam na ba ng iba na nag-resume na tayo ng atin pong ng atin pong uh, workman's treasure but we understand our time itong time natin ay napaka ay busy ang bawat isa and most of our viewers ay talagang nagre-review na lang dahil may work po sila meron po silang mga ay nasikaso pa lalong lalo na sa mga araw-araw na trabaho po mga kapatid but glad to have uh, brother Randy Rigor with us ngayong umaga good morning po kay brother Randy Rigor once again kasama natin yan kanina sa sa prayer breakfast sabi niya mapagpalang umaga pong muli evangelist Roger and family at sa ating masisipag na host na si Sir JR at Sir BC amen and at sa uh, at sa lahat ng kapatiran God bless po and glory to God amen amen good morning po and then good morning din kay BC pa lang ating host na yun salamat kay Brother BC na available po siya for us this, uh, ngayong umaga And si Brother Joe ma could not uh, be with us dahil wala pa siya sa kanilang tahanan ngayon. And but salamat may available na host po mga kapatid si Brother BC. Good morning. Then kay Brother BC. Kasama din natin si Pastor Robert ng ating kaibigan na si Pastor Robert Casis Jan watching from Balinsuela City. Good morning Pastor and good to have you with us dito sa Workman's Treasure. At sabi niya magandang umaga po Pastor Roji. And God bless. Oh, God bless. Ganun din po sa inyo, Pastor. Enjoy the lesson this morning. And um, we are also, uh, we are with us also, uh, Sister Lian and Tabigne. Good morning, Sister Lian. And wife po ito ng ating comrade ni si Pastor Hurley. And of course, uh, they're watching from, ano po mga kapatid, Cagayan Valley. Good morning, Sister Lian. Sabi niya, good morning po. Good morning din po sa inyong family and good morning din. sa mga kapatiran din dyan sa uh, uh, Gospel Light, sa KJB Gospel Light. Amen? So, okay po mga kapatid, hindi natin ano yun kasi medyo na-delay lang ako. May mga sinusulat lang ako po mga kapatid, hindi ko masyadong na, na, na kaya late na ako nagbukas ng camera. But this morning ay dito din kasama natin si Sister Rose, sabi niya, salamat po sa Panginoon na may pagkakataon uli na makapagpakinig ng Workman's Treasure Habang wala pa pong pasok, amen, purihin po ang Panginoon. Amen. Parang holiday pala ngayon, no? So, walang pasok. Oo nga, holiday pala ngayon. So, I praise the Lord. Amen. 
So, tayo po ay manalangin po mga kapatid. Diretso na tayo. Hindi na tayo magbiplay ng music. And uh, punta na tayo sa ating prayers para atin pong um, discuss po ang mga kailangan natin pag-usapan ngayong umaga. Uh, na played na yung madaming mga music kanina. So, tayo ay after the prayer, ay diretso na po tayo sa ating discussion. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, lumalapit kami sa inyo ngayong umaga. mi ng tulong Panginoon sa pag-usapan po namin uh, sa inyong salita. Lord, sa aming pagbukas na inyong salita, sana ito ay maging malinaw. Sana makita po namin, Panginoon, ang kagandahan ng inyong salita at iyong, uh, yung plainness ng inyong word. Lord, na maintindihan namin, ma-enjoy namin ngayong umaga. Give us wisdom also, Panginoon, and strength, Lord, and knowledge, understanding. Hindi namin kaya on our own, so we ask for your help, the, the Holy Spirit, na mag sa aming mga puso at isipan na makita namin, Lord, ang wondrous things out of your book, Panginoon. And bless us now, Lord, and may you all be glorified sa lahat ng uh, mangyari today. And this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen and Amen. <clears throat> Muli, good morning. And uh, mayroon, mayroon actually mga brethren dito na nag, nag na present na po. No? Na, uh, dito si Brother Joseph, Sister Glenda, si Brother Eliseo, uh, Sanchez, si Brother Listi Milina, Sister Cherry Ruth Parr, si Brother Omar, hello, Arsadon, Sister Ophelia, Sister, uh, Brother Ezekiel Rigor, si Sister Evangeline Sanchez, good morning, si Pastor Robert, na acknowledge natin ganina, si Sister Merlin Parting, and Sister Recabel Nolasco. Amen, good morning po. So, okay, dako tayo sa ating, ano po, nandito po tayo sa teachings of Jesus Christ, dito sa board po natin po mga pted, the teachings of Jesus Christ, or the teachings of Christ concerning the tribulation period. So actually, we discuss about uh, Matthew chapter. This is these are the teachings of Christ that can be found in Matthew 24 and Matthew 25, in which nandito na tayo ngayon sa Matthew 24. We'll be dealing on verse 29 to 31. Yun ang di discuss natin, no? So na na upisahan po natin yung teachings ni Christ. This is the teachings of Christ in preparation. The teachings of Christ for the Jews in preparation for the coming tribulation. Kasi sa time nila, they never thought, dito po yung teachings na yon yung time na yun sa Jesus Christ, dito sa earthly ministry ni Christ. Pero, they never thought na magkaroon ng church age. Walang, wala pong nakakaalam except ang Panginoong Jesus. Hindi alam ng kanya mga disciples na meron pang coming church age or merong age of grace. But, uh, they they thought that after after that, that event, that cross there, at mag na yung tribulation period. So, okay. That's why yung teachings na yon ay may arrow papunta dito. This is not for the age of grace. Okay, may arrow na papunta sa so baba ako mga kapatid para magtayo na lang ako para mas maganda yung ating ano. So may arrow po papunta dito. Ibig sabihin, the teachings of Christ here is pertaining po dito sa time ng tribulation. So ito ay, ito yung whole na seven years tribulation. Itong part na ito ay seven years tribulation. So makikita po natin ito yung papababa ah, yung aking sulat, no? So yan na natin. Okay, so ito yung time po mga kapatid, ito from here, this is after the rapture para makita lang natin tapos uh, here's the second coming. So here's The entirety of this is the seven years of tribulation. So, minamagnify natin, no? Kasi ito yung topic natin. So, this is the first three and a half. Okay? Itong part na ito is the first three and a half. At itong part na ito is the second three and a half. Okay? So, makikita po natin yan. So, we discuss una in, using the outline of... Using the outline dito po sa... Dito po sa Matthew 24, we discuss... Dito po sa unang part ng beginning of sorrows. Na-discuss natin yan. And the next one is, na-discuss na din natin yung abomination of desolation. So if you'd like to know more about this, you may review some of, of the lessons that we have. no So the abomination of desolation. Ang next po mga kapatid is the great tribulation, which is the second three and a half, which is the great tribulation. 
So marami tayong na-discuss po dito po mga kapatid and uh, hindi na natin uulitin para makasave tayo ng time. And ang ngayon, ang ating pag-uusapan po mga kapatid is itong signs, okay? Signs. of Christ's coming. So, pag-usapan natin yung sign of Christ's coming pointing dito sa second coming ng Panginoon. So, yun ang pag-usapan natin. So, yun kasi ang next na event. So, we talk about the Great Tribulation starting from verse 21 ng Matthew 24 all the way to so verse 28. So, in-explain natin in detail, in full details, doon po mga kapatid. Ngayon, we'll be looking now at verse number 29. Now, I'd like you to follow, at yun ang babasahin po natin. And bago po natin babasahin, I'd like you to understand na itong teachings na ito were not intended for the body of Christ. Hindi natin kailangan ng lesson about sa tribulation or truth about warning about sa tribulation because we're not going to be in the tribulation because before the tribulation will take place po mga kapatid mararaptured out po tayo po mga kapatid kukuhanin po ang body of Christ tama so malinaw po yon no so but we 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 learn this as part ng ating lesson is information and truth na kailangan din nating matutunan para hindi tayo madadala sa mga panlilin lang or sa mga deception ng kulto at ng mga mga false teachers na nagtuturo ngayon that's why we have to uh, 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 teach this clearly po mga kapatid that this is intended for the nation of Israel and it's not for the body of Christ and uh, this is just also to inform us na marami pong mga nasa stumble at nagkakamali lalong lalo na sa mga teachings na ito po mga kapatid and akala nila yung mga bagay na para sa tribulation ia-apply nila dito okay yung para bag sa future ia-apply nila sa church age yun ang mahirap yung ba, para, mga bagay na para sa para sa Israel ia-apply nila sa body of Christ that's why ang title ng atin pong every Tuesday is rightly dividing 101 okay now with this po mga kapatid and let's read Let me read Matthew 24, verse 29. Okay, Matthew 24, verse 29. So, yun po ang mga kapatid, ang... Teka ha, saglit lang, saan ba yung aking screen? Para makita ko po lang sarili ko. Mas gandang meron din. Teka ha. Yan. Okay. So... Matthew chapter number 24 verse 29 The Bible says immediately after the tribulation of those days So ito yung sinasabi ng ito yung sinasabi ng Bible no after the tribulation so we're talking now of the post trib So ano ang next ng great tribulation after those tribulation is the second coming ng ating i, 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 i anticipate That's why ito yung Sabi ng Bible, immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken. So yun ang mangyayari. This will happen at the end of the tribulation. And then shall appear the sign. Look at that. There's the sign that will appear. That's why the sign of Christ coming. So, this sign will appear po mga kapatid at the end of the tribulation, no? And the sign, look at, and the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. Then shall, then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. So, they shall come in with power and great glory. This is actually the second coming. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven 
to the other. So, with that po mga kapatid, malinaw, yung atin pong pag-uusapan ngayon, in that, that, that would carry sa uh, uh, verse number 29 all the way to verse 31. Then the, the rest po mga kapatid will be uh, talking about next week. Now, I'd like you to understand that there are only two comings of the Lord Jesus Christ to earth. Okay? With the exception of the Old Testament na mga pre-incarnate appearance ni Kristo, appearances ni Kristo, yung ang tawag dun ay Theophanes or the appearance of the Lord, po mga kapatid, yung remember, pag may mga may angel of the Lord na lumapit kay Abraham, na pag usap kay Isaac, kay Jacob, these are not ordinary angels. These are the Theophanes. These are the appearances of the Lord Jesus Christ. But technically, when it comes to Advent, there are two comings of the Lord Jesus Christ to earth. So, these two earthly appearances are referred to His first and second advent. The first and second advent. So, you know, the first advent or the first coming was here during this time when He died on the cross of Calvary nung, nag, nung nagmanifest siya ang Diyos, si Christus sa flesh. That was the first advent. It happened already po mga kapatid. So, the details of these appearances only known to man through the Word of God. We know it because of the Word of God. And obviously, God wants men to know about the past. But equally as important, God wants men to be forewarned and prepared also of that future event. And He wants us to know of the second advent. So, here's the first advent. Here's the second advent. So, the rapture is not considered as the second advent because the rapture is not the coming of Christ to earth. Christ only appeared in the clouds, in air, in the air, in heaven, but He never touched down to earth. But the second coming was really touched down. That's why we have an arrow down here. Then here's the mountain, the Mount of Olives where He, he comes po mga kapatid. So, and, it, uh, and the details of this po mga kapatid, although this is yet future, is very important. And for instance po mga kapatid, God God's word provides enough details for the Jews to avoid being surprised. Remember? We talk about to avoid being surprised by Christ's second coming and this is very really important sa mga Hudyo na pansin nila, magbigay sila ng pansin sa mga teachings ni ni Jesus Christ, especially during the time ni Jesus Christ. Now, there are two two of the primary purposes, okay? There are two of the primary purposes of Christ's second coming or second advent, ano yun? Number one is to judge the earth. That is to judge the earth. That is one of the purposes of Christ's second coming. Why He needs to come? It is to judge the earth. And number two, and that is to ultimately deliver the believing Israel. So to judge the earth and to deliver the believing Israel. So, to deliver the Israelites. Kasi pagdating ng Panginoong Jesus, the, 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 the remnants of Israel will be saved. Yet po mga kapatid, not everybody in Israel, but the remnants will be saved. The believing Israel will be saved. Yet, Israel also has a problem. Ang problema sa Israel, they have problem with walking by faith. Yun ang problema nila and how to walk by faith, how to believe God on with regards to sa kanya mga sinabi. So the Bible points out that the Jews, they grew accustomed. They grew accustomed and they are very dependent upon signs. So yung, yung problema ng Israel, na sanay sila, they have really problem to walk by faith na walang nakikita. Tayo, we are commanded for, for we walk by faith and not by sight. But sa buhay ng bansang Israel, even from the time of the time of Abraham to the time of Moses and even up to the time of the earthly ministry of Christ, nasanay sila sa mga signs that hindi ka nila papakinggan kung hindi ka, hindi ka magpe-present ng sign. That's why we, one of the teachings of Christ is yung the teachings of with regards to the signs concerning the kingdom. So we dealt on that lengthily also po mga kapatid, the signs concerning the kingdom. So sanay po sila. That's why in 1 Corinthians chapter number 1, 
The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter number 1 in verse number 22 at ang sabi ng Bible in verse number 22 ito yung sinasabi ng ng Israelites ay ng Bible concerning sa Israelites in verse 22. The Bible says for the Jews require a sign and the Greeks seek after what? Wisdom. So ano ang requirement ng Hudyo? They require a sign. So yun po mga kabatid and and ang daming present ang Panginoong Hesus also during his earthly ministry with regard sa signs, wonders and miracles. Bakit? That is to validate his claim that he is indeed the Messiah of Israel. He's the Messiah of God for Israel. So yun po yung yun po yung kailangan po because yun yung requirement ng Hudyo. Do you remember Nicodemus in in John chapter number 3? I'd like you to look at In John chapter number 3, one of his proving point why Jesus Christ must be coming from God is this. In in verse number 2, the same came to Jesus, this is Nicodemus, the same came to Jesus, John 3 verse 2, the same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. So God is, Christ is always proving and showing them signs. So ano yung purpose ng sign na ito? So sabi ni Nicodemus, I, I know you come from God, or else you cannot do these miracles kung hindi ka nanggagaling sa Diyos. Now ang purpose ng miracles and signs na ito, look at John 20 verse 30, that's where the purpose of the signs and wonders. John 20, verse number um, 30, the Bible says, mga kapatid, let me go there. John 20, 30, it says here, and many other signs, okay, and many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples which are not written in this book. Now, look at verse 31. But these are written. So, there are signs that are written in the Bible or in the book. But what is the purpose? But these are written that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing ye might have life through His name. So, yun yung purpose, that they might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Hello, the Son of God, that He is the Son of God. Kaya yun po ang point. So, nasanay ang mga Hudyo na merong sign. Kung walang sign, mahihirapan sila. Yun yung struggle nila is to walk by faith. They need to see some physical, visible sign. Dahil sanay sila na nakita nila from their very eyes that, that the water turned into blood. Nakita nila from very eyes that the Red Sea was divided, nakita nila from their very eyes yung pillar of clouds by day and pillar of fire by night, nasanay sila na wala silang trabaho but pinabigyan sila ng Panginoon ng pagkain galing sa langit at lahat ng iyon. Yun ni sila, nasanay sila. Kaya nung Panginoong Jesus, madami siyang pinagaling, madaming mga bulag na nakakita, madaming mga lame na nakawalk, may mga matay, patay na nabuhay, at lahat na yun deliver so that they might, ano sabi kanina? That they might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. Amen. Yun yung purpose because the Jews require a sign. Now, if you are trying to impress the Jews and you say that you come from God, the Jews will simply say, Okay, show us what you've got. Show us what you've got. Ibig sabihin, um, Show us some signs. Uh, amen. That's why sa, sa tribulation period, ang Antichrist ay meron din siyang mga wonders and miracles and signs na ginagawa. Kaya naniniwala ang mga tao noon. Pero, pagpunta mo sa Acts chapter number 2, what about Jesus Christ? Have Jesus Christ provided all the necessary signs? Yes, He did. Yet, the problem with the people is still they can't believe. They still nailed him to the cross. Look at Acts 2 in verse number, ano po mga kapatid? 
in verse number 22. Look at Acts 2 verse 22. The Bible says, Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs. So he is approved of God in the presence of all the Jews by miracles and wonders and signs. Look at which God did by him in the midst of you, as you know yourselves also. So alam nila yan. Napasa ng Panginoon. Yet at the end, they still crucify the Lord. So that's the Jews. <laughs> so God therefore, mga kapatid, now going back dito sa ating pag-usapan sa second coming, sa sign ng second coming, okay, God therefore, in His infinite wisdom and in His boundless mercy, God will provide three distinct and three distinct three visible signs or precursors or things that bago ito mangyari may makikita kayo visible physical signs that would serve as uh, a wonder or a sign or announcement or announcing the return of his son so, merong three forerunners or precursors that you can know that this is it. That this is now the coming of His sign. Uh, the coming of His Son. And what are those three things, mga kabated, which we are going to discuss? The number one, po mga kabated, what is the sign? Merong mga cosmic, okay? What are those signs, po mga kabated, na makikita natin merong cosmic and earthly Disturbances. Okay, una mong makikita, which is we're going to detail on that, may mga cosmic or mga heavenly and earthly disturbances. Makikita mo yung mga stars, yung moon, yung sun, ay dumilim, nagiging blood, and all of that. At merong mga earthly disturbances, including the earthquakes, including the flood and many things po mga kapatid na makikita po natin. So, ito yung sinyales na ito na nga, darating na siya. And then you will see the next second one is the sign of the Son of Man. Okay? The sign of the Son of Man. Yan ang second mong makikita. Ito yung mga Ito yung mga forerunners, okay? Ito yung mga forerunners or precursor announcing the return of Christ. Okay? Makikita mo yung sign ng, ng Son of God. So, makikita mo yung glory niya dyan sa kalangitan. I'm talking of the people in the tribulation period. By the way, itong mga sinyalis na ito would not appear not until the rapture would take place. Dapat natin maintindihan, ha? Kaya wag kayong tumitingin ng sign ngayon. This sign will not appear not until the rapture will take place. So, mauna muna ang rapture at lahat ng ito, ang mga sinyalis na ito, would all happen in the tribulation period. Dapat, you have to put that in the right perspective. Okay? Para hindi ka, uh, hindi tayo magkamali. Kasi may mga tao dito na mumuhay sa grace period or sa church age po mga kapatid. Sa panahon natin, na, sa, natatakot sila. They're, they live in fear. Why? Because they have been looking for some cosmic and some some earthly disturbances and they apply it to their lives, uh, to their to their time and say, this must be the second coming of the Lord at baka... Pag ganun, by the way, pag makakita ka na ng ganun at yun ang tinutukoy, mag-isip-isip ka na, mawawala na yung iba at ikaw ang naiwan. Naiwan ka na sa tribulation. So, Pero pag wala, wala kang ganun, iba, iba yung mga nangyayari sa mga current events sa panahon natin, it should not be connected po mga kabatid with Matthew 24 or with the teachings of Christ because this would first take place before all of that happened. The rapture should first take place before all of that happened. So ngay ngayon, stop looking for the signs of the second coming because when you talk about the rapture, there is no sign. Okay? There is no sign. Kaya huwag kang ano po mga kabatid. Magra-rapture muna bago magkaroon ng mga sign. And next po mga kabatid, the next thing na makikita nyo po, not only the cosmic, ito yung tatlong categories, no? The cosmic earthly disturbances, the sign of the Son of Man, and Christ also, 
the sending of Christ sending Christ sending his angels okay Christ sending his angels what is the purpose of Christ sending his angel the purpose of that is to gather the elect in which all of this ay nakikita natin sa Matthew chapter number 29 okay balik ay 24 balik ulit tayo sa Matthew 24 makikita po natin itong tatlong category na ito in verse 24 look at immediately ito the cosmic and earthly disturbances look at what are these immediately after the tribulation of those days what are those disturbances shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light. You see, after the tribulation, nakita nyo po, matapos mo na yung beginning sorrow, matapos mo na yung great tribulation, at sabay-sabay ito, mangyayari, bago, right before Jesus Christ will come down. At yun na yung pinakasign niya mismo. So, if this is the end of the tribulation period, it end with the second coming po, mga kapatid. Is, if, if, it, if it commence or begins with the rapture, it culminates with the second coming of Christ. So, and, and, at ang sequence nito, immediately after the tribulation of those days, shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken. So, these are the cosmic and the earthly disturbances. And all of that, kung mangyayari yun po mga kabatid, ang mga hudyo dapat ay tingin na sa taas. Bakit? Maya-maya, may baba, may darating. Maya-maya, may, may makikita kang sunod. Ang next is, this time, was makita mo na yon nila yon there will be the sign of the Son of Man. Now, look at in verse number 30. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. You see that? So, they will see the sign of the Son of Man. So, these are the three categories at once na makita na leon, nako ito na nga. Si Kristo na nga ito. So it is precursored or forerunnered by cosmic and earthly disturbances that would happen right after the tribulation of those days. And it is very clear po mga kapatid na may kita po natin. And then, what you see, sabi sa verse 20, 30, And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds. So once they see the cosmic disturbances, then they will see the coming of the Son of Man where in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. I could, I could think, I could imagine how, how, how marvelous, how, how glorious is that coming. Kasi pagbaba po mga kapatid, with great glory. So, when you talk about glory, it, 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 you also talk about not only of the grandeur, you also talk about of that light. Now, we talk about of the glory of Christ which, which shineth far above the glory of the sun. And you see that in, in the middle of the gloominess, in the middle of, in the middle of darkness, here's the great light, the great glory would be coming from heaven. Nakuha nyo ba yung picture sa inyong mind? Nakuha nyo na yung picture? Ano yung photograph of the second coming of Christ? Then, the next thing is verse 31. Ito na yun, the Christ sending His angels. Verse 31, And He shall send His angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together His elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Pagkababa ng Panginoong Jesus, ipapadala pa niya kasama ang kanyang mga angels para i-gather yung lahat ng mga lost sheep ng house of Israel para salubungin ang kanilang hari. So nakita po natin, these are the three forerunners. The cosmic earthly disturbances, the sign of the Son of Man, and also Christ sending His angels. Po, mga kapatid. So, now, although, uh, let me leave you at that, although no one can completely certain, po mga kapatid, the duration of the cosmic and earthly disturbances, I, I cannot determine 
kung 5 minutes lang ba yan, 10 minutes lang ba yan, 1 hour lang ba yan, I could not determine kung ano po ang gap between the cosmic and earthly disturbances with the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. We cannot know. But one thing is certain is the order, the sequence na nauna muna itong earthly disturbances, then the second coming, mga kapatid, then the third precursor seems to provide no time also for unbelieving to repent. Wala din, yung third, yung Christ sending His angels to gather His elect, wala din tayong, hindi na natin alam kung ilang oras, kung ano ang time po, mga kapatid. Now, we will consider each one of these precursors, no? In great detail. So, let's talk first, number one, unahin po natin po, mga kapatid, but before that, let us, let me, let me show that, let me share my slides first, bago natin ma- Bago po natin maya, no, pakita ko muna sa inyo yung presentation natin. Okay. Para, nag-prepare din ako ng, of course, ng mga lesson with regards dito, yung timeline po dito po mga kapatid. So, this is, this is what we, we've discussed so far. The Jews require a sign. So, makikita po natin that truly, ang Hudyo ay nag, nagre-require ng sign po mga kapatid. So, of course, in Luke chapter number 21, verse 25, where you will see that there shall be signs in the sun, and in the moon, and in the stars, and upon the earth, distress of nations, with perplexity, the sign, and the waves roaring. So, po mga kapatid, this is, uh, so the Jews require for a sign. And ano yun? Yun, yun yung cosmic and earthly disturbances na diniscuss ko po. Number two is the sign of the Son of Man. And number three, Christ sending His angel for the purpose of gathering the elect. So, just in case hindi nyo mabasa ang aking listahan dito sa, sa board, at least you could see this sa inyo pong mga screens po mga kapatid. Okay? So, and I'd like you to understand that look at the rapture. May nilagay po ako dito. There's no signs. Okay? No signs. So, sa rapture, no sign. Okay? Wala ka mag... Itong sign na ito, para to sa second coming. Para dito to. Nakita nyo po? Para po ito sa second coming. Itong lahat ng mga sinyalis po na ito po, mga kapatid. So, I'll leave you at that po, mga kapatid. Now, let's look at the first, ano po, mga kapatid, sign uh, na ay first, ano, precursor na kailangan nating tingnan. Ano po yun po, mga kapatid? Let's look at po mga kapatid, number one, let's look at the cosmic and the earthly disturbances. Okay, let's read again Matthew chapter, let's deal on this in details now. Matthew chapter 24 verse 29, balik tayo. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken. So, Mga kabatid, unfortunately, ito po, no? Maraming mga prophetic teachers or prophecy teachers fail to recognize the distinguishing features between the rapture of the church, the rapture of the body of Christ, and the second coming. Yun nga lang yung problema po, mga kabatid. The rapture, as we know, involving the church gathering to the clouds. Okay, it involves the gathering in the clouds. That's why meron tayong clouds. Then to meet the Lord in the air. We, as we know that, po mga kapatid. And there is no visible signs. There is no precursors. Walang palatandaan. Walang mga forerunners na mga sinyales na makikita ka. Walang ganun. Wala tayong nakiki, walang sinasabi si Paul na ganun. But it is imminent. Hindi natin alam kung kailan at kung papaano. We're just loving His appearing. We're just waiting for His coming. But we cannot say na ito na, malapit na. Wala tayong masasabing ganun. However, po mga kabated, this is not certainly the case when it comes to the second coming, po mga kabated. When you talk about the second coming, as you talk about Christ's return to earth, it begins with judgment. It begins with judgment. Pag, pag ano na kaagad, pagkabalik na kaagad na ako, mag-umpisa ng judgment, then later on, followed with blessing with this earthly, ano po, kingdom po mga kapatid, in the kingdom, uh, that's the blessing. But pagkabalik kanya kaagad, even before pa siya bumalik, merong mga precursors. Kagaya na sinasabi natin, 
yung mga cosmic earthly disturbances, dadaan mo na sila sa tribulation, tapos right after that, meron ng mga ganun po mga kapatid na pangyayari. So, this second coming that we're talking about to earth is preceded by visible evidences. Meron mga visible na evidences, especially yung mga natural disturbances po mga kapatid. Or what the world refers as yung mga natural disaster. Nasusundan po siya ng mga natural disaster. Clear po yung mga sinyales. Now, every, listen, every real rapture passage, pag makakita ka ng rapture passage, like when I say rapture passage, I mean 1 Thessalonians 4, I mean 1 Corinthians 15, I mean Philippians chapter number 3, I mean Titus chapter number 2, I mean uh, 2 Timothy uh, 4 verse number 8. Pag makita ka ng mga rapture passages po mga kapatid. Okay? Every real rapture passages, noticeably, one thing na hindi mo makikita, yung indicators of physical evidences. Indicators ng physical precursors or physical evidence. Wala kang makikita doon na the rapture will follow after magunaw muna ang mundo, maglindol muna, magwar muna. Walang ganon. Wala kang, wala kang makikita ng ganon. Yet these types, itong mga disturbances na ito, itong mga natural disasters na ito, are prevalent and they're even dramatic just prior to the coming of Christ. Prior to that coming, and dami mo makikita mga kabaded. In fact po mga kabaded, kung maisip po natin, the anxiety, no, isipin mo yung takot po mga kabaded, caused by the world war, uh, worldwide upheavals will, all of this, worldwide kasi would cause men's heart to fail them. At ito yung mga events na ito na nakakatakot, na mga horrible it's really one of the, the expression of the wrath of God that the earth is going to experience during those days. That's why you don't have to be there. Amen. Amen. You don't need to be there. You don't, you don't have to wait for that. I'm not expecting for a tribulation period. But I'm waiting for a rapture before the tribulation will take place. And these events, this cosmic and earthly disturbances consist of at least five specific five specific catastrophic events. Ano po yun po mga kapatid? Number one, anong makikita mo dyan? No? So, it is clear. Let me share po mga kapatid my, my, my slides again. At anong, anong mga catastrophic event na makikita mo dyan? Number one po mga kapatid, Okay, may kita mo is, ito yung mga catastrophic event. Number one, the sun, ano? Be darkened. Nakita nyo po, the sun be darkened. Look at Matthew 24. <coughs> Excuse me. Matthew 24 verse 29. It's clear there sa ating text. Okay? The Bible says in verse 29, Shall the sun, immediately after the tribulation of those days, shall the sun be darkened? That's the next thing na makikita po natin, the sun be darkened. Amen. Ito yung catastrophic event. Can you imagine? Hindi ko alam kung ilang oras yan, pero sinasabi ng Bible na ang in a daytime, the sun will not shine. It will be darkened. So, pag walang sun po mga kabatid, Hindi umiilaw ang sun, so madilim. Ang next na makikita nyo po is, the moon will stop shining. In verse number 29 also, and the moon shall not give her light. Do you see that? Ito yung mga catastrophic event pointing to the second coming of Christ. The moon will stop shining, and the third one po mga kabatid, and the stars fall from heaven. Ako po. Hindi ko alam kung, kung sino yung mga kasama ko nung last time po mga kapatid na we were, I think we were in the beach. And si Brother Magno ata yun, na habang naka, naka, nakatingin kami sa kalangitan, 
And sabi namin, ako, ang dami niya, no? Kasi yung pagka, we're talking of the stars. Uh, dahil sabi namin na, kasi as, parang, ginamit siya sa Bible na parang, parang pangbilang ng mga infinite. Like, for example, as the numbers of the stars of heaven. So, ganun talaga sila karami. So, and we know po, mga kapatid, that these are very big, big, ano po, na mga, mga ano po mga kapatid ng mga planets mga malalaki no sa so, sub ang sabi nga ng mga scientist na mas malaki pang iba sa earth ang iba may mga maliliit pero they are so far po mga kapatid now imagine all of that or ang mga stars na yon na tinitingnan natin at kinakanta ng mga bata twinkle twinkle little star how i wonder what you are up above the world so high, like a diamond in the skies. At tinitingnan mo, na-imagine mo, how I wonder kung mahulog ka dito sa amin, anong mangyayari sa aming tahanan. Kaya nga may makikita kang mga apocalyptic movies na uh, may comet na naghihit sa earth. ba? May mga ganun sila. Pero itong lahat ng ito, wag ka matakot ng ganun kahit hindi yun mangyayari. Hanggat hindi muna ma-rapture tayo. Kaya huwag ka matakot doon. Sa tribulation na lang yon. But the stars will fall from heaven. You see that po mga kapatid? Ang hirap no, no? Uh, thinking that, imagining also. Ano pa? Pang, pang-apat. The powers of heaven, of the heaven shaken. Clear no? The powers of the heaven ay shaken. And uh, ang tindi. So, na parang ang ang lahat ng iyon parang feeling mo pati sun pati pati moon feeling mo baka malalaglag so ito yung mga disturbances na talagang men's heart will fail them amen and ito yung ah, grabe no ito yung entrance ba nagbibigay ng entrance sa second coming ganda naman ng entrance ng Panginoon mag mag Kagulo mo na, may disturbances mo na sa kalangitan, didilim, ang sun, ang moon will not shine, the stars will fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Ito yung grand entrance, alam nyo po mga kapatid, grand entrance ng second coming. Kung i-cross-reference mo sa Luke chapter number 21, kung i-cross-reference natin sa Luke 21 verse number, verse number 25, It would add po mga kapatid, the sea and the waves will roar. So this is part of the earthly disturbances. The sea and the waves will roar. And imagine po mga kapatid, gano kalakas yung mga waves, yung mga tidal waves and mga tsunamis and all of that. Bakit? Imagine mahulog yung ano, yung impact po ng mga stars na yon. How it would affect the seas and the waves po mga kapatid. Yan ang entrance ng second coming and all of that will happen first then Jesus Christ will come. And kung i- gawin mo yan sa rapture, mahirap. Delikado po mga kapatid kung ang rapture at second coming ay parehas lang. Nako, maka-experience muna tayo nito bago mag-rapture. Huwag na. Gustuhin mo na lang mamatay bago mo maabutan yung rapture na yun. Kung yun lang pala. Kung dadaan ka muna sa mga bagay na yun bago ang rapture po mga kapatid. So these are, ito yung after those days. Ito yung mga catastrophic events na mangyayari po mga kabated. So ito yun, no? ito yung i- events. Pero sa, sa rapture, no signs. Walang ganun. Walang pangyayaring ganun po mga kabated. So nakikita po natin. So I hope po mga kabated na i-relate po natin at naintindihan po natin yung mga bagay na yun, no? And that's very important to note po mga kabated. So yan po yung mga five specific types of catastrophic events na may kita po natin po mga kapatid. Amen. Now, look at another part in Mark chapter number 13. Look at Mark 13 in verse number 24. Mark 13 verse number 24. Ano sabi po ng Bible po mga kapatid? The Bible says, But in those days after that tribulation, sabi dito po mga kapatid, the sun will be darkened, And the moon shall not give her light. Look at verse 25. 
and the stars of heaven shall fall, and the powers that are in the heaven shall be shaken. So ano yung powers that are in the heaven shall be shaken? Malay natin, baka isa yun sa mga principalities and powers in heavenly places. They will be also shaken po mga kabadet. Now look at Luke chapter number 21 verse 25. Again, these are the 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 forerunner, the precursors before Jesus Christ will come down from heaven. Luke 21 verse Luke 21:25. The Bible says, "And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth distress of nations." You see, Inaisip mo yun habang na-experience nila yung mga bagay na yun. There is that distress of nations with perplexity and the sea and the waves roaring. And verse 26, look at men's heart. Ito yung sinasabi ko. Men's heart failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth and for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Ganun. Ah, grabe yung takot na yun po mga kapatid. Man's heart failing them for fear. Siguro ang daming nababaliw na mga time na yon. Ang daming na overwhelm sa sobrang takot na kakamangha. Saan ka na magtago? Saan ka na? I remember in, I think that was in Revelation chapter number 7, sabi doon, Follow us! Mountain, follow us! Hide us from the wrath of the Son of God! Hide us from the wrath of the Lamb! Ganun, no? Makikita po natin po mga kabatid. So, Luke refers to these events as signs. That's why, signs of Christ coming. Amen. These are signs and this is important because God's use of sign always points to Israel. That's why it's so important because it points to Israel. And it cannot be pointed to the church po mga kabatid because we don't require a sign. But the Jews require a sign. And some scoffers, mga kabatid, maraming mga scoffers pointed to this unfathomable magnitude of destruction as their so-called proof for Scripture's illegitimacy. Bago po natin tayo mag-declare na illegitimate at hindi totoo ang sinabi ng Bible, hindi pa nga nangyayari, mafulfill pa lang eh. Doon ka na magsabi pag mangyayari ito o hindi mangyayari, yun, doon ka na magsabi na hindi totoo ang Bible. Pero nangyari lahat ng prophecies sa first coming. Maraming nangyayari ng mga prophecies and na fulfill. Ito, these are still yet future. And bantay na lang. Because yet po mga kapatid, the same God who spoke the heavens and the earth into existence can also just as easily use this element. But hindi ka maniwala na kayang pabagsakin ng Diyos ang mga stars na yon. Kaya niyang padilimin ang sun. Kaya niyang hindi bigyan ng ilaw ang moon. Bakit hindi kaya ng Diyos yon? Sinabi nga lang niya, and everything is done. Yun pa po mga kabatid. Kung gaano kadali niya ginawa ito mga elements na ito with his creation, for his purpose of div for for this hindi ba niya kaya yon and also for his purpose of divine warnings and for his purpose of divine judgment hindi ba kaya ng panginoon na gawin yon these events are not limited only to the writings of the new testament these events are not only limited to the writings uh, sa teachings ni Christ during his earthly ministry instead these catastrophic events were even prophesied before Christ came. These are prophesied in several of the Old Testament like prophet Isaiah, like Ezekiel, like Joel, like Amos, like Haggai, and they prophesy about these things. Po mga kapatid, consistent to what the Lord Jesus Christ is teaching po mga kapatid. And unfortunately po mga kapatid, most men today, most men today, choose to ignore, they choose to reject the scripture po mga kabated. And a natural byproduct of this rejection, of this ignorance, is man's current ed educational system. And meron tayong mga sistema ngayon na nagtuturo na ang Bible ay hindi totoo, 
ang 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 Dios ay hindi totoo at ang ang mga ito ay hindi totoo at may fictional. Ni sila niniwala, yun ang mga educational system natin ngayon. Nagpo-promote ng unbelief po mga kabadet. So it seems purposefully designed to lead the students away from the truths of the scripture. That's why it, it is evident in their life they just eat, they just drink and they they are uh, celebrating and marrying after marrying and all of that po mga kapatid as if there is no judgment as if there's no hell as if there's no no tribulation and and the wrath of God is awaiting them but when educated men seek to exclude God from the truth equation you know the out the outcome produces some of the greatest scientific pitfalls po mga kapatid. Yet, when man finally runs out of possible answers and he simply create theories, create hypotheses po mga kapatid, which produce what the Bible refers to us as science falsely so-called in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse number 20. And that's really the, the, the problem po mga kapatid. And interestingly, also, very few scientists, learned men, realize po mga kapatid, that their rejection of God, their denial of who God is as the originator, as the sustainer of all things, that it involves a greater level of faith than accepting God to be the Almighty as the one who is behind all these things. And I told many students before that it takes a great deal of faith not to believe on God rather than to believe that there is a Creator. Mas mahirap kayang hindi maniwala na walang Diyos kaysa maniwala na merong Diyos. Bakit? You will have a lot of question if you say there is no God, there is no Creator. Everything happens in chance, by chance. Everything happens only by accident. And all of this, it is after a big bang and all of that. So you see po mga kapatid, makikita po natin, it takes a great level of faith. Bakit? Could you imagine, I will convince myself, this is a pen, and I'll say, walang gumawa nito. Walang gumawa nito. Sadyang nagpakita lang to. You see, ang hirap nun. Niwala ka ng ganun, ang hirap nun. Di ba? So it takes a great deal of faith. Ha? Huh? Paano si sabi mo walang gumawa nito? Ito ha, pen lifeless. Made up my design din siya, sarili niya pero walang buhay. Tapos hindi ka nga makapaniwala na pag sabihin ko sa iyo, sa iyo aksidente lang to, it just appear at walang ginawa nito. You see, it takes a great deal of faith. Ha? Huh? How could you believe on something na hindi to walang gumawa nito? Now, much more. Pag, pag sa mga complicated things na, like the earth and everything, the, the creation and man, at sabihin mo, aksidente lang lahat yan. Saan mo naman kinuha yung kahibangan na yun? ba? Yun po eh. Yun ang mahirap eh. Akala nila, mahirap ang maniwala. The easiest is to, ano, the, the, the hardest thing is to find answers apart from God. So those scientists, those, those, uh, yung mga intelligent people who have read the described events na sinasabi ng Matthew 24, sinabi ni Cristo, and they could even offer some in-depth explanation. They try to offer some in-depth explanation on how utter chaos described in the last days of the Jacob's trouble. Kaya, Meron silang mga explanation na dahil to sa mga nuclear weapons, dahil to sa mga world war warfare, and all of that, kaya nangyayari yung mga bagay na yon. No, if you believe the Bible, if you believe God, you don't just say that this is the result of nuclear war and nuclear weapon. But you will say that this happens intentionally and done by God and leading of the Almighty God. 
The same God who created all those things is the same God also that put these all these things down. Nakita po natin? So, these events, going back, not only announced the coming of Israel's Messiah, so this is not only the announcement of the, the coming of Christ, but they also declare the onset. This is also the onset of the day of the Lord. This is also the, de- the day of the Lord, the day of the Lord. I, we know the day of the Lord will last for a thousand years. But this period begins just prior to the Lord's second coming and will continues until the dissolving of the present heaven and earth po mga kapatid. Now according to scripture, the arrival of the day of the Lord and the Lord's arrival are announced by the heavens. So the arrival of the day of the Lord is through the announcement of the heaven and the arrival of the the the, the, uh, the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ from heaven is also announced by the heavens. The Lord's arrival as a conquering king is really a terrible, terrible day. When the king will come, you don't like it. Because before he will come, Nako po mga kapatid, isang katutak na nakakatakot ng mga mga dilubyo na mangyayari sa ta, sa mundo. Buti na lang sa rapture walang ganun. Amen. Sa rapture ay woo, lilipad ka na lang, papalitan ang iyong katawan at you will live amen with him forever. Now let's look at some things here. Let's look at Matthew chapter I uh, know Isaiah chapter 13. Now look at this announcement Look at these Old Testament verses with regards to the day of the Lord or to the coming of Christ. Look at Isaiah 13, verse number 10. Isaiah 13, verse number 10. The Bible says in Isaiah 13, in verse number 10, For the stars of heaven and the constellations, now take note, thereof shall not give their light. You see the cosmic and earthly disturbances? Will not give their light. The sun shall be darkened in his going forth, and the moon shall not cause her light to shine. So that was right. Jesus Christ was also telling about that. So these are nothing new. Jesus Christ was just affirming what the prophets have foretold po mga kapatid. This is, this is what the, the, the cosmic disturbances na makikita natin right before the second coming of Christ. Look at Joel 2. Joel chapter number 2 verse 10. The Bible says in Joel 2 verse 10, And the earth shall quake before them. These are the earthly disturbances. The earth shall quake before them, and the heaven shall tremble, and the sun and the moon shall be dark, and the stars shall withdraw their shining. See, this is exactly what Christ had been telling His disciples. Look at verse 31, Joel 2 verse 31, And the sun shall be turned into darkness look at that and the moon into blood now look at that word before the great and the terrible day of the lord come so before that great and terrible day of the lord come see that see this is a forerunner these catastrophic events is a foran these are forerunners or precursors before Jesus Christ would come. Now look at Joel chapter 3 and look at verse number 15. Look at Joel 3 and verse 15. Po mga kapatid, makita natin, the Bible says, The sun and the moon shall be darkened, and the stars shall withdraw their shining. So that's very consistent. Hello? That's very consistent. I don't know mga kapatid if you heard nagkakagulo ang mundo meron silang mga meron mga sinasabi nila mga blood moon yung blood moon yung makikita mo yung yung moon na red instead of white um, and it happened po mga kapatid may, na, may, may nangyayari na sa history 
Uh, but that's not the blood moon that the the moon will turn into blood that we're talking here. Amen. And because of a misunderstanding concerning the timing of the day of the Lord, that's why many people would say, dumaan na yung blood moon eh. That's why, nasa tribulation period na tayo. Nasa day of the Lord na tayo. So, yun ang problema. So, yun ang mga mali, mga kapatid, ng mga bagay na ito. So, let me show you some Old Testament prophecies with regards doon po sa ano po mga kapatid, with regards doon sa Inetukoy po natin. So, let's look at some Old Testament prophecies po mga kapatid. Okay. So, the Old Testament prophecy. This is, I quoted Joel 2.31 that uh, before all of these things will happen, before the great and terrible day of the Lord would come. And what are these prophecies? The stars of heaven and constellation, the sun and the moon darken. Na, nabuksan natin kanina yan. Ito yung timing, no? Next, the sun and the moon shall be dark and the stars shall withdraw their shining. Joel 2.10 Nabasa natin kanina. And the sun turned dark and the moon into blood. That's Joel 2.31 Nabasa din natin kanina. And the sun and the moon shall be darkened and the stars will withdraw their shining. Now, don't forget to look at Look at the arrow. They are not pointing at the rapture. There's no signs of the rapture, but they're pointing at the second coming of Christ. The second coming. You see that? They're pointing at the second coming of Christ. You see, these are the Old Testament prophecies. So, these are nothing new. Jesus Christ is affirming kung ano yung sinasabi ng mga prophets po, mga kapatid. So, sana, sana malinaw, sana nakita natin na mali, mali, maliwanag po mga kapatid, nakikita po natin na lahat ng ito po mga kapatid ay talagang um, pinatunayan. Okay? So, for instance po mga kapatid, we are told that the sun and moon will go dark and the stars will fall from heaven. And may mga false teachers na magsasabi, included in this or added to it will be the shaking of the powers of the heavens. So, most likely resulting, kung ganun ang ta- totoong nangyayari po mga kapatid, kung yun ang mangyayari, most likely resulting from these dramatic changes, mahuhulog yung mga stars galing sa langit at that day, the changes to the sun, to the moon, there is also the changes to the sea, and it wave, its wave will, will roar. That's why nakita natin kanina sa look. And it is important to realize that the moon stabilizes the earth remember if you look at because of gravity the earth the, the moon will stabilize the 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 axis the tilt the axial tilt of the earth po mga kapatid and it's maintained by gravity and both the sun and the moon affects the solar and the lunar tides now mapansin mo the solar and the lunar tides if there's something happen on the moon if something happen on the sun ano mayayari sa mga cha- uh, sa, sa ano po sa karagatan sa mga waves it would also affect po mga kapatid. So, any change in the sun, amen, and the moon, mga kapatid, can cause unpredictable kas- catastrophic results and much more pag mahulog pa yung mga stars na nagagaling sa langit. Napaka unimaginable yung pangyayari po na ito. And there will be multiple worldwide tsunamis, tidal waves caused by earthquakes, and by the changes described, mga kapatid, in the Bible, in the text that we just have read, maybe, mga kapatid, just a tip of the iceberg na napaka grabi pa siguro. Hindi lang natin mailagay sa ating isipan. Kaya, understandably, ganun na lang ang, ang, ang nasabi, no? Ganun na lang ang takot ng mga tao this time. Ganun na lang ang great apprehensions in the minds and in the hearts ng mga nakatira sa lupa na yon, sa earth na ito, during those days. And the book of Luke says that fear will be so severe that man's heart will fail them. So, and the book of Revelation even points out on that. Points out that emotional, that mental anguish. Na yung mental groanings and stress 
and even will cause men to say, Sige, mountains! Sige, rocks! You go ahead, fall on us! Just hide us from the wrath! Could you look at there in Revelation chapter number 6? Revelation 6, look at Revelation 6.16. Hide on us! Ganun na lang eh. Sabi nila, And said to the mountains, and to the rocks, Sige muna, atras ka muna sa verse 15. Ito na lang ang nagiging, So their heart really failed them. And look at, And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and the every bondman, and every free man, hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains. Verse 16, look at, Nung sabi, And said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us! Hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb. Ganun na lang kanilang takot po mga kapatid. You see that? That is something that you need to think about. If you are going to miss the tribulation, you are surely, you will surely, I mean, if you are going to miss the rapture, you will surely experience all these things. Without doubt. And that, you don't like it. And praise the Lord, you're living in the age of grace. You can be saved, and when you'll be saved, by trusting the all-sufficient cross work of Christ, you will be part of this Great gathering, not on earth, but in the clouds, to meet the Lord in the air. And that is the deliverance of God for the body of Christ before He's going to chastise the world, before He's going to chastise Israel. Amen. So the next thing, na tingnan natin, we look at the cosmic and earthly disturbances. The next thing that we need to see is the sign of the Son of Man. The sign of the Son of Man. So yun po, ito na. The next thing na event na mangyari, the sign of the Son of Man. So when the world turns pitch black, as in pitch black, wala ka makikita, very dark. Walang sun eh. Ang sun lang ang nagbibigay ng liwanag sa atin. So for sure, madaming brown out dyan. Sa gulo pa naman ng mundo. An earth's inhabitant will not expect what is about to take place. Wala silang alam. Ano na kayang sunod dito? Parang walang katapusan ng pagkahulog ng mga stars. Walang katapusang lindol. Walang katapusang mga roaring ng waves. Ang nakakatakot. Nagtatago na lang sila kahit saan sila nagtatago. And they never thought kung ano na ang sunod. Wala na silang alam kung anong sunod. Nor how drastically things will soon change. Then the day of the Lord will be introduced with the sun and moon being darkened when they those things would happen the sun and the moon darken but this phenomenon of darkness is only temporary why upon Christ's return things spontaneously would swing to the opposite end of the spectrum with a normal light multiplied seven times brighter than the sun it would be opposite when when there is that pitch black when there is that total darkness po mga kapatid. But when the Lord will come, it will be also so glorious. Amen. The light would be so intense. It's so bright po mga kapatid. That is seven times than the bright of the sun. The brightness of the sun. Seven times. And that's the, the picture. That's the photograph when Jesus Christ will come on that day. So, due to cosmic and earthly disturbances, there will be pitch black. But when the, the next event would happen, in Matthew chapter, balik ka ulit, so Matthew chapter number 24, is verse number 30. That's the next event. In verse 30, And then shall appear the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the sun coming in the great clouds of heaven with great power and great glory. So I'd like you to take note on that great glory. Why? Because it is very opposite 
in verse 29. There was the great darkness in verse 29. And there is now great glory in verse number 30. So, this is what Isaiah pictured out. Look at Isaiah chapter number 30. This is what Isaiah pictured out. Isaiah 30, verse number 26. Isaiah 30, verse 26. The Bible says, Moreover, the light of the moon shall be as the light of the sun. Ito na nangyari, no? And the light of the sun shall be sevenfold as the light of seven days in the day that the Lord bindeth up the breach of His people and healeth the stroke of their wounds. You see that? So, after that darkness is a total opposite, mga kapatid, in the other side of the spectrum, the normal light would be multiplied seven times brighter. You see that? The moon shall be as the light of the sun. Imagine. <laughs> and the light of the sun shall be sevenfold. So seven times siya nagiging brighter and as the light of the seven days. Wow. So this overpowering that will overpower, overshadow darkness, this brilliant light will shine forth sometime following the piercing darkness and the blackening of the heavens. And this bright light would announce and herald, you see, picture this out. There will be a total darkness and in the clouds, boom! There's a light in the whole universe. Amen. And this bright light now is a herald. This is now the announcement. Hear ye, hear ye, hear ye. The Lord is coming. Amen. It's, it's, it, it served as a herald, as an announcement to the whole universe that the king in his wrath will shine. Amen. Will come from heaven's glory. Can you imagine when the light of the moon become as the sun in its normal strength? And can you imagine the sun would shine sevenfold? Wow. Boom. Liliwanag. Amen. It would be as the light of the seven days. A good analogy of this involves how some sports team, remember, especially sa basketball, will introduce their athlete. Lalo na ngayon, nasa ano bang mga nasa playoffs or lalo na pag finals he introduce nila pointing to the superstar pag sabi nang i-announce na si Michael Jordan wearing jersey number 23 the greatest of all time and just think of a boxer na sa kanyang entrance sa, may meron siyang ano po uh, born in Sarangani province Philippines sabi doon the fighting senator. Ladies and gentlemen. Amen. Parang ganon. Let's all welcome. Amen. So ganun, ganun ang, di ba mayroon silang parang, parang special na intrada with some loudspeakers, with some, ano po mga kapatid, magnificent na mga, na mga introduction na, na pakulo. Now, think about this. This is Jesus Christ. This is the King of Glory coming. Sa second coming, huh? And in the middle of gloominess and darkness and pitch black. And here's the sun. One that was blackened and now it will shine seven times. And here's the moon that will not shine now will shine as the light of the sun. And think of the King of Glory being introduced with this magnificent light, the Son of Man, in all His glory po, mga kapatid. That's why in Matthew 24, nabasa natin kanina, 
then shall all appear. Then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. What a grand entrance of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. With that exceeding light po mga kapatid. So to the human eye, okay, using human reasoning, these events might seem simultaneous. Yet po mga kapatid, in reality, the following sequence seems to take place. Parang tingin natin, parang simultaneous. But it seems to take place po mga kapatid. In all of these things, in reality. So, kung titingnan natin, my sequence. Let's look at, in that sequence, ito po, let me share my slides. Ito yung mga, ito yung pangyayari po mga kapatid na dapat nating tingnan. Let me share my slides with that regard. Now, let's look at this. Ito yung sign of the son of man. Ito yung kanyang spotlight po, mga kapatid. And the spotlight is the, the, the light of the, the moon shall be as light. And all of that will be pointing, mga kapatid, doon sa part na yun. Okay? And with this also, uh, sige, punta natin mamaya yung gathering ng angels. At, uh, you see, it should be the order. There will be the brightness of the sun will magnify seven times. And the son of men then will appear. Then all the tribes of the earth mourn. Nakita nyo po yung order sa Matthew 29. Okay. I Matthew 24 verse 30. Then the great trumpet will sound. Then Christ sent his angels to gather the elect for protection. Then Christ comes po mga kapatid to earth to execute the judgment upon Israel's enemies. Then the armies which were in heaven follow Christ to earth. Titingnan natin yan as we go on. And the angel stands in the sun inviting the fowls of the air to gather. Okay, eat! Eat! For the great supper of the great God. And all of that po mga kapatid. So, you see, ito po yun. Na dapat natin tingnan. So, la let's consider each of these elements were further details, mga kapatid, in some various contexts. Okay, the brightness of the sun. Yan yung una. Ito yung, kung may order man dito sa second coming, mga kapatid, uh, may meron pong ano po mga kapatid, brightness ng sun. Una muna. So kung ilagay natin in order itong second coming, then you will see the brightness of the sun. Magnified. Okay? Ito, ito na yun, the sign of the Son of Man. Ito yung, kung, kung baga, kung ipagkasunod natin, ang una, the brightness of the sun be magnified seven times. Then the Son of Man will appear. Okay? Then they shall see the Son of Man coming. So, kung makita nila yung brightness ng sun, if, if you put this in order, liliwanag ang buong universe Tapos, they will see the Son of Man coming. Okay? with In great clouds, with great glory and power. Okay? That's the next thing na gagawin nila. They shall see the Son of Man coming. Kasi yun ang order eh. Makikita natin yan sa Matthew, uh, Mark 13 verse 26. You don't have to go there. In Luke 21 verse 27. And the next instance is the, the tribes, all the tribes of the earth Mourn. That's the next thing. So you see the, the, the glory of the sun, then the coming of the, the son of man, then the tribes of the earth will mourn. And nakita mo sa sunod, and uh, nasa verse 30 ako sa Matthew 24, then ang sunod po mga kapatid ay makikita natin, then he shall send his angels. There's the sending of angels and the sounding of the great trumpets in verse number 31. That's, makikita po natin. Okay, then next Christ leaves heaven and comes to earth. 
to execute judgment upon the enemies of Israel. He will come, then of course execute that judgment, pagkabalik niya. Wala tayong time to discuss all of this. And the armies which were followed Christ, kasama niya galing sa langit. Amen. And the angel then, in Revelation 19, look at, sige po, basahin na lang natin ang pagkasunod-sunod. Revelation 19, verse number 11. Basahin na lang natin sa Bible. Ito yung will happen when Jesus Christ will come. Ito yung pagkasunod-sunod. Ito yung sequence. Look at, the Bible says, And I saw heaven open, and behold a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. And in righteousness he doth judge and make war. Verse 12, His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man okay, knew but himself. Verse 13. The next is verse 13, and sunod, And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, as his name is called the Word of God. And look at the armies. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon with white horse. So nauna ang Panginoong Jesus, then the armies followed him. Hindi kasabay, ha? The armies followed him upon great white horses and clothed in fine linen, white and clean. Verse 15, And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that which ye that should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and he treaded the winepress. Oh, this is the, the picture. He treaded the winepress. Remember, he gathered all of this, and he will tread the winepress. Amen. Apakapakan of the wrath of the Almighty God. And look at verse 16. And it says there, And he had on his vesture, on his thigh, a name written, King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Verse 17. And I saw an angel standing, ito yung angel sinabi ko, standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice saying, To all the fowls that will fly in the midst of heaven, come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God. So you, that's the order na makikita po natin. Ulitin ko po yung order. There's the brightness of the sun that would be magnified seven times. And there's the son of man will appear. This is right after the cosmic earthly disturbances. Huh? Then the Son of Man will appear. There's the sign muna, then the Son of Man will appear. Then next po mga kapatid, all the tribes of the earth will, will mourn. And number four, and a great trumpet would sound. Number five, Christ sent His angels to gather the elect for, for protection. And number six, then Christ will leave Heaven, bumukas lang yung langit eh. Then we leave heaven and comes to earth to execute the judgment upon the enemies of Israel. And then the armies which were in heaven follow Christ to earth. Sumunod yung mga armies. And then the angel stands in the sun na nabasa natin sa Revelation 19.17 po mga kapatid, inviting the fowls of the air to gather together to the supper of the great God. Na para kainin yung mga Mga bangkay, yung mga corpse, yung mga, mga carcasses po, mga kapatid, na nakasunod doon. So, to put that together, let me show again my slide. And ito po yun po, mga kapatid. To put that together in these slides, then these are the second Advent events. Ano yun? The Son of Man appears. Then all the tribes of the earth mourn. And the great trumpet sounds. And Christ sends. Amen. His angels to gather the elect for protection. So that's the, the thing na ma, ma, makikita po natin in that regard, just in case hindi nyo na nakuha yung aking sinasabi kanina. Okay? So with that po mga kapatid, is hope ay na kuha po natin na intindihan. So in that, okay? So the scripture, then, when considered as a whole, Merong sequence kang makikita of events together. Kasi kung tingnan mo lang, parang mahirap, no? Parang akala mo simultaneous nangyayari. But when you take the whole scripture, take them as a whole, you will see that there are sequence of events together. Consider what happens when the light of the sun 
instantaneously shines, okay? As seven days at once. Shine at seven days at once. Consider, think of that. And this presumably results in an intense heat. Of course, mag sobrang, sobrang init upon the earth and its inhabitants. And Isaiah prophesied, ito yung a prophecy ni Isaiah. Think of, think of the seven times yung init ng araw. Ito yung, ito yung prophecy ni Isaiah. Balik ka sa, balik ka doon sa uh, Isaiah 30 verse number 26. Anong sabi, na, anong sabi dyan sa Bible? Isaiah 30 verse 26. Moreover, the light of the moon shall be as the light of the sun, and the light of the sun shall be sevenfold as the light of seven days in the day that the Lord bindeth up the breach of His people and healeth the stroke of their wound. So many Bible teachers like liken the result of this phenomenon, mga kapatid, to some man-made calamity like nuclear bombs. Ano pa? God can use man's devices. Yes, that's true. He can use man's devices. But he certainly does not find this necessary. Pwede niyang gamitin yun. Pero hindi kailangan. God can do that. Amen? Without the help of men. And Paul points to likely cause of this calamity as the Lord's coming in vengeance. That's why sabi ng, sabi ng Panginoon kay, uh, sabi ni Paul in, in 2 Thessalonians, look at 2 Thessalonians 1 verse 7, the Lord Jesus, look at that part there, shall be revealed, 2 Thessalonians 1 7, uh, okay, uh, revealed from heaven with His mighty angels, Look at verse 8. In flaming fire, na sabi dyan, taking vengeance on them that know not God, that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. You see that? In flaming fire, taking vengeance. So when Jesus Christ come, you don't have to, you don't need a nuclear bomb on all of this. It's Jesus Christ taking vengeance. Amen. He's taking vengeance on them that know not God. Amen. And that's why it's a time of war. Kung mapapansin natin, wala, wala ng ibang ano po mga kapatid, it's really a time for war. And let me share my slides on this. And this is the event na sinasabi ko kanina, I saw the heaven open, and behold the white horse. So this is really time for war. And you see Christ comes to earth to execute judgment upon the enemies of Israel, and you will see the armies which were in heaven follow Christ to earth. And you see there the angel stands in the sun, inviting the fowls of the air to gather for the supper of the great God. So if you if you put that together, that's really the vengeance of God. This is really the vengeance of God. And with His armies, mga kapatid, makikita po natin. So, Napakalala, napakasakla po mga kapatid. And you don't want to be there. No? Don't want to be there. So with that po mga kapatid, the brightness of Christ's coming will cause even the horses of God's enemies to be smitten with astonishment and with blindness. Naalala mo si Paul? Think of a seven times. Ang sun would be seven times brighter. Think of that. You see, do you remember Paul when he was when he was exposed to a a sun that is brighter than I I a, a light that is brighter than the heat of the sun, the light of the sun. Ano nangyari sa mata ni Paul? Nabulag si Paul, di ba? Now you, ito din ang mangyayari. Now think, pagbaba ng Panginoong Jesus, there was this great glory, there was this great light, and look at Zechariah chapter number twelve. Look at Zechariah twelve. The Bible says in Zechariah 12, I'd like you to notice in that madness, na, na babaliw ang mga tao. Look at Ze Zechariah 12.4. The Bible says in verse number 4, In the day, saith the Lord, in that day, still talking of the day of the Lord, saith the Lord, I will smite every horse with astonishment, and his rider, yung rider ng horse, with madness. 
And I will open mine eyes upon the house of Judah, and I will smite every horse of the people with blindness. So you see that? How would God smite those horses with blindness? And if you put them together, it's because during that day, there was a great exposure of a great light that is seven times than the ordinary light of the sun. And notice the rider will also be smitten with madness. So, nababaliw. And the consuming heat will cause the people's flesh and his eyes and his tongue. Ito yun, sa sobrang init. Consume away. And people will say, Oh, is that, maybe that's that's a nuclear uh, ano po, uh, detonation. And maybe that's a natural calamity. They'll say, maybe that's a global warming. Maybe they'll say, last one on happening, maybe ito yung cost ng mga carbons na nandun emission doon sa ating tinatawag natin dyan sa ozone layer. Sabi ng mga global warming at saka yung mga earth people. Now look at Zechariah 14. Not 12, but 14. Let's look at 14 verse 12. Zechariah 14 verse 12. Ito yung mangyayari. Oh. This is also exactly the event of the second coming. At ito yung sinasabi ng propeta. Look at. And this shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite all the people that fought against Jerusalem. Look at. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet. Wow. Kita mo? Fum! Parang consume habang nakatayo. The flesh. Hindi, so, alam nyo yung, alam nyo yung sobrang ano po mga kapatid, pag Pag sobrang talas ng sword, nakatayo pa, putol na yung ulo. No? Nang iba kasi, pag hindi ganun katalas, madala sila at, at matumba sila. At ito po, sobrang pressure, lakas at init. Nakatayo pa lang sila. Woof! Consume na we ang kanilang flesh while they stand upon their feet. And their eyes shall consume away in their holes. And their tongue shall consume away in their mouth. Do you see that? Do you see now the picture, the likeness when that will come, Christ will come? Kung nakakatakot, mga kapatid, yung mga cosmic disturbances, do you think, mga kapatid, pagbalik ng Panginoong Jesus, mas lalo pang nakakatakot? Hello? Although many prophetic teachers, mga kapatid, have said in this description, and they will equate this to a nuclear holocaust, but I believe this, this is not a nuclear weapon. This is God doing this to all His enemies. Some people will always eco-connect a nuclear, nuclear, man-made calamity and all of that. No, this is Christ doing this in His vengeance. Huwag na kayo mag-isip ng mga man-made resources na mag-destroy sa mga tao. This is really God's hand. This is really Christ's wrath. Amen not natural resources or whatever man-made na mga weapons. Amen. This should go beyond human comprehension. And this should go beyond man's endurance. Yet during this time, similar to Israel's time in Egypt, God supernaturally protects the Jews. God supernaturally protects His people. And we have many examples Oh, now easy this task can be performed by the Lord. At nakikita mo nga eh. Do you remember doon sa yung fourth man, yung si Shadrach, Bishak, at Abednego? Tinapon sila doon sa fiery furnace po mga kapatid. At sobrang hit seven times, pinapainit seven times yung, yung ano po mga kapatid, yung furnace na yon. Pero nung tinapon sila doon, they were not hurt. They were walking in the fire. Amen. And they were accompanied by the fourth man is the one in the Son of God. And the same what happened in the time ng Egypt, and dami nangyayari, pero God protected Israel in the future also. He can certainly turn up the heat. He can sternly, surely turn up all of that to kill everybody. But, amen, it will not hurt His people. Amen. His people are completely Amen. Completely protected. Let me share my slides again with this regard. 
Ito po yung pangyayari po mga kapatid. It says here, so the vengeance, the Lord's vengeance. Amen. At ito mangyayari po mga kapatid, this is what happens sa the revelation. The Lord Jesus and His mighty angels revealed in flaming fire, taking vengeance. And smites every horse with astonishment and rider with madness. And what else? And their flesh consume away while they stand upon their feet. And their eyes consume away in their holes. And their tongue consumed away in their mouth. So yun yung picture ng vengeance ng Panginoon. And don't, don't link this, connect this to whatever man-made catastrophic event. But this is God, the Lord Jesus Christ. This is God's hand. And doing all of this po mga kapatid. So you have to understand that. Take note on that. Because during this future event, God will shield His people on earth from the brightness while destroying His enemies. And those enemies not immediately destroyed by the brightness of Christ coming and will be gathered by the armies that would follow the King of Kings to earth po mga kapatid. At ito na yung mangyayari. Let's look at now Joel chapter number 2. At ito, napaka, napaka detalye po mga kapatid in Joel chapter number 2. The Bible says in verse number 1, Blow ye, Joel 2 verse 1, Blow ye the trumpet in Zion, and sound an alarm in my holy mountain, let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord cometh, for it is nigh at hand. Let all the inhabitants of the land, and, and a day of darkness, look at, a day of gloominess, a day of clouds, and of thick darkness, and morning spread up upon the mountains, and a great people, and a strong, there hath not been ever the like, neither shall be any more after it, even to the years of many generations. So, walang katulad. And a fire debar before them, and behind them a flame burneth. And the land is in a garden of Eden before them, and behind them a desolate wilderness. Yea, and nothing shall escape them, and the appearance of them as the appearance of horses, as horsemen, so they shall, shall they run like the noise of chariots. On the tops of the mountain shall they leap like the noise of a flame of fire that devoureth the stubble as a strong people set in a in a battle array before their face. The people shall be much pained all faces shall gather blackness and they shall run like mighty men. They shall climb the wall like men of wars. Ito yung may papadala ng Panginoon, no? And they shall march everyone on his ways and they shall not break their ranks. Neither shall... Ito yung mga army. Na naisip nyo ba yung army that followed him? Neither shall one trust one another. They shall walk everyone in his path and they shall fall upon the sword and they shall not be wounded. They shall run to and fro in the city and they shall run upon the wall. They shall climb upon the houses. They shall enter into the win windows like a thief and the earth shall quake before them and the heaven shall tremble. The sun and the moon shall be dark and the stars shall withdraw their shining and the Lord shall utter his voice before his army for his camp is very great for he is strong that executed this word for the day of the Lord is great and terrible and who can abide it? Wow. I don't know kung nakarelate kayo but these are what the armies had been doing at hunting down nila yung isa bawat isa and later po mga kapatid, the Lord amen, will, shall utter his voice before his army. For his camp is very great. For he is strong that executed this word. And for the day of the Lord is great and terrible. Whew, you don't want to be there. While Christ's coming is fearful time for the enemies of the Lord. It's really a fearful time for the enemies of the Lord. But it serves as a time of great rejoicing and relief also for the believing Jews. That the heads that once hung down in shame will be lifted up as the Jews will finally witness the arrival of their long-awaited physical redemption. From God's enemy will scatter through that intense suffering while the Jews, the believing Jews, will be gathered with that expectation of redemption in peace and in safety. That's why in Luke chapter number 21, 
Look at Luke chapter number 21. And it says there, Woo! Napakaganda. Verse 28. Look at Luke 21, 28. Pag sabi niya sa mga Hudyo, pag makita niyo na itong mga bagay na ito, pag lahat po yun nakikita niyo, sabi ng Panginoon sa kanila, verse 28. And when these things begin to come to pass, wow, look at, then look up! Lift up your heads! For your redemption, draw it nigh! Bakit? Because sa mga believing Jews, this is salvation. Pero sa mga enemies of God, this is wrath. Do you understand that? That is wrath. And that's the day of the Lord. Let me give you a little photograph in my timeline of what the day of the Lord is. Amen. It says here, look at the day of the Lord coming. Amen. And it says here, a great and terrible day, a day of darkness and of gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness, a fire devoureth before them, a flame burneth behind them, a desolate wilderness behind them, and the sun and the moon darken, and the stars withdraw their light. Sige, ang day of the Lord, brethren, for goodness sake, hindi linggo ha, hindi Sunday, at ayaw mo ito, ayaw mo ma-experience yan, yung day of the Lord, kamit po mga kapatid. Amen. Hindi, ayaw mo yan, ayaw mo ma-experience. Pero para sa mga Hudyo, Amen. Para sa mga Hudyo po mga kapatid, itong day of the Lord is, yan, look up for your redemption, draw it nigh. Yun sa mga Hudyo, it's the redemption. You see this part over here? We added, sa mga kaaway ng Diyos, it's a great and terrible day. Pero sa, sa Hudyo, ng mga ligtas, your redemption, draw it nigh. Ang pinaka-redemption nila is the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. So, mga kapatid, I cannot finish Lahat ng ito, hindi pa natin na-discuss ang Christ sending His angels. Pero we'll, we'll have some of that po mga kapatid as we uh, continue next week. Pag-discuss natin yung pangatlo, yung Christ sending His angels. At ito yung mga events na kikita po natin. Ito, sino nagturo po nito? Si Jesus Christ mismo po mga kapatid. Siya mismo ang nagturo nito. So, yung second event which is very, very critical, very important, Lahat ng ito, pag-usapan po natin. But ano bang, ano bang makukuha mo natin? Ano bang, ano bang dapat ma- makita po natin dito po mga kapatid? So in Matthew, at the time of his writing, Matthew neither knew nor wrote of the New Testament church removal from the earth. Walang alam si Matthew kasi that, that rapture has been revealed to Paul. Walang alam si Matthew. na may removal, even nung sinulat ito ni Matthew, na may removal ang church on earth. But Paul clearly distinguished between the church departure and the gathering of the second advent by pointing out that the Lord Himself will come and get His church. Wala po siyang angel na ipapadala to get us, pero sa second coming, He is going to send His angels at the second advent while He leads His armies to the earth. Now, if this gathering at the rapture is the same with Matthew chapter number 24, then why no mention by Paul of the armies following the Lord when he talk about the second coming? So there is no general catching up in the day approaching at the second coming. Wala ka ding makikitang catching up. Kumparehas lang ang rapture at second coming. Kasi maraming nag ano po eh, nagre-reject nito. Pero wala ka makikitang catching up. Wala ka makikitang caught up. It is simply not a rapture at all. Because second coming is not a rapture. This is why the Lord sent His angels to gather His elect for supernatural protection upon the earth. Kasi hindi naman sila kukuhanin, padalin sa langit eh. He just gathered this to protect His people on earth, the nation of Israel. And this protection takes place toward the end of the Daniel 70th week. 
And that is almost simultaneously with his return in vengeance on the day of the Lord. And the Lord will gather his elect Israel from all the earth, from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the earth. And this passage is in no way synonymous with the rapture of First Thessalonians chapter number 4 of First Corinthians chapter 15. So in fact, there is no rapture. There is no caught up. There is no catching away from the earth in Matthew 24, 31. Nasa guni-guni lang yan, nasa isipan lang yan ng mga post trib people. But so much for that is this. So what is this information na natanggap po natin? Nakakatakot, really terrible the information when Jesus Christ will come. But you don't have to be there. You don't have to witness such kind of unimaginable event because you are living in the time of grace where salvation is by grace through faith alone. Salvation is free. Salvation is already accomplished. Not by you, not by anybody, not by a church, but accomplished by the Savior, accomplished by this cross work. That when you put your faith and trust that what he did on the cross of Calvary, amen, he will save you from your sins. Okay? He will save your soul in an instant. You will be forgiven. You will be justified. You will be reconciled to God and you are no longer God's enemy. And not only the salvation of your soul, but to those who have been saved today, those who have trusted Christ and believed to Christ to be His sufficient Savior, they have also a promise of deliverance at the rapture. We are not appointed unto wrath. This is the days of wrath, the seven years of tribulation. But you have a promise of catching up. Then we which are alive in the coming of the Lord shall be caught up with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. We are going to meet the Lord in there. So that is the promise of the future redemption, the deliverance of our soul to be removed from this earth and to be with Him forever. But if you miss to believe today, if you miss the gospel of the grace of God today, if you miss to believe how that Christ died for our sin, was buried and rose again the third day, if you miss that, there is not only hell waiting for you, but there is a seven years of tribulation that is unimaginable things that will happen that hindi pa nangyari sa buong mundo kailanman po mga kapatid. At ito ay mangyayari, may experience sa isang tao kasi pag hindi ka madala sa rapture, makasama ka dito and you will be considered as God's enemies. And be careful. And this is not only to inform you about the teachings of Christ concerning the tribulation, this is not only to tell you that this is not written for the church and for the body of Christ, intended for the body of Christ, but this is also to tell you that don't go there. Don't miss the rapture. Don't miss to be saved today. While salvation today is by grace through faith. But this day is no longer the case. It's no longer the case. And mga kapatid, sana po ay na-bless po kayo, naturuan tayo, at lalo kayong na-appreciate living in the time of grace. Living in this time po mga kapatid kung saan na not only God saved you in grace or by grace, but He saved, He dealt you in grace. At ang pakikitungo niya sa atin ay hindi wrath, hindi anger, hindi vengeance. At ang pakikitungo sa people of God in the dispensation of the grace of God is grace. Gracious, love, kindness. And praise the Lord. And all of that is possible because Jesus Christ, amen, paid a ransom for our soul. And now we are a child of God and He could not, amen, poured out His wrath Amen. To us anymore because His wrath has been poured out to His Son. It has been taken. We have taken that, our, the Son of God taken our place so that He don't have to be angry at the believer anymore. 
sa panahon natin. So, it's wonderful to be saved. It's good to be saved po, mga kapatid. So, thank you for listening and um, sana po naging malinaw ang mensahe. Pagpatuloy po natin yung third part, yung Christ sending His angels. Tapos na natin tong dalawa po na ito. Ito na po, mga kapatid. Next. Part pa rin yung signs of the second coming. And discuss some of these things sa iba pa sa Matthew 24 and that is really enjoyable po, mga kapatid, to see. So, thank you very much and um, Okay, let's pray. Lord, thank you sa inyong pagsama sa amin. Salamat sa kabutihan ninyo. Salamat sa strength na binigay niyo sa bawat isa. Bless niyo yung time together. And this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hello po kay na Mother Mary. At hello sa mga kasama niyo dyan. At hello sa bawat isa. Amen. Sa, dito sa Facebook Live sa mga brethren po natin. God bless everyone and have a good day everyone. He, hello Sister Lani. And hindi ko ma-recognize ang isang sister. Amen. So, okay, bye-bye. Thank you, Mr. Host. Salamat, salamat. The sands of time are sinking The dawn of heaven breaks The summer morn I'm For the fair sweet morn awakes Dark, dark hath been the midnight But day spring is at hand And glory, glory Sweet well of love The streams on earth I've tasted More deep I'll drink above There to an ocean fullness His mercy doth expand heaven in storm and wind and tide now like a weary traveler that leaneth on his guide amid the shades of evening while seen life's lingering sand I hail the glory dawning in Emmanuel's land with mercy and with judgment my web of time he Right on.
Not at the crown he giveth, but on his pierced.